All right, chemical equations give us mole ratios. A Dr. Kelly reaction. Last lecture, we learned how to balance chemical equations. Now we're going to look at what they tell us in terms of the context of the mole. Real quickly, however, let's review what the mole is. A mole is a named number. We have lots of named numbers. Classic example is one dozen is another way of talking about 12 things. Made famous by Abraham Lincoln, we know that one score of something is 20. If you've done construction, then you may be familiar with the concept that 144 is very gross. Ew! Why 144 is so gross? I don't know. But we're familiar with the concept of named numbers. A mole is the same thing. One mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This number is so important that it's actually named twice. In addition to being known as the mole, it's also referred to as Avogadro's number, after the man who discovered it. Why do we care about it, though? What's so important about it? All right, if you're a P-chemist and listening, cover your ears, all right? Just, or if you're not going to cover your ears, just deal, all right? What's so important about Avogadro's number is that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd protons or neutrons, since they have roughly the same mass, has a mass of one gram. What this relationship means is that we can read the atomic mass off our periodic char chart not in terms of AMU, but in terms of grams. In other words, here's what the magic the mole does. If I have one atom of carbon, I have to go to the periodic chart and say that its mass is 12.01 AMU. But if I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, then I can say that I have 12.011 grams of carbon. And since we give this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd a name, and we name it the mole, then I can go to my periodic table and I can say, if I have one mole of carbon, then I have 12.011 grams of carbon. But wait, there's more. This works for any element on the periodic table. I'm sure you have a periodic table in front of you. And you can tell me if you have one mole of silicon, how much silicon do you have? You have 28.0855 grams of silicon. If you have one mole of gold, then you have 196.0855. 966 six, six grams of gold. When you have one mole of something, you can read its uh, you can read the mass off the periodic table in terms of grams. This is awesome. This provides us with the conversion factor between number of atoms and grams. We can extend the principle of the mole beyond just individual atoms. We can use that concept to determine the mass of a mole of a compound. For example, if I have one mole of methane, then 
what mass of methane do I have? So if I have one mole of methane, what mass of methane do I have? Ooh, what's with this ghosting effect I've got going on here? All right, so if I have one mole of methane, then what mass of methane do I have? Well, if I have one mole of methane, that means I have one mole of carbon atoms. And according to my periodic table, one mole of carbon atoms is 12.011 grams. If I have one mole of methane, I also have four moles of hydrogen, and each mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.008 grams. So my mass of so my mass in one mole of methane would be 1 times 12 plus 4 times 0. Point, it would be 4 times point zero um, three two, or a total of 16.43 grams of methane in one mole of methane. So the mole is a very powerful tool. It allows us to convert from mass to a number of molecules, to a number of formula units, to a number of atoms. It provides us with a very, very powerful tool. Let's work a couple more examples here. Again, this is an abbreviated form of a lecture that I have a much more extended format that you should have listened to already at this point. All right, what is the mass of 4.2 moles of sodium sulfate? If I was going to work, with, work this with my line, I'd start off and I'd say I've got 4.2 moles of sodium sulfate. Whatever I'm going to do next, I'm going to have to get rid of moles of sodium sulfate. Hmm, do I know a relationship between number of moles and mass. Why, yes, yes, I do. I always know the molar mass of a substance. And remember, the molar mass molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. Again, review. All right, there we go. So we can figure out the molar mass of sodium sulfate. One mole of sodium sulfate contains two moles of sodium. According to the periodic table, I go to sodium, and I find the molar mass of sodium. And on my periodic table, I'm looking at it is 22 point nine nine zero grams per mole then I have one mole of sulfur and according to my periodic table it's I find sulfur I look there and I see that sulfur is thirty two point zero six five grams per mole then I go to oxygen and I look there I have four oxygens in one mole of sodium sulfate, and each oxygen mole is 16.00 um, grams. So now it's some crunching. And I get 2 times 22.990 equals 45 point 
nine eight zero. One times thirty two is thirty two point zero six five. And four times sixteen is sixty four. Add those wonderful numbers together. Plus sixty four. Will you still need me? Will you still? Right. Uh, there we go. So one mole of sodium sulfate is equivalent to one hundred and forty two point zero four eight grams of sodium sulfate. So now I have a conversion factor between mass and moles. I know that one mole of sodium sulfate is equivalent to 142.045 grams of sodium sulfate. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? All right. Now I've got my units to where they cancel out. And I've gotten rid of moles of sodium sulfate, and I'm left with units of grams. So now I want to multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom. And when I do that, I get times 4.2. My calculator gives me 596 point um, 589, but look at my sig figs here. I have one, two, two sig figs. So my answer should have one, two, two sig figs. So I'm going to round that away. So after I'm through accounting for sig figs, I have 600 grams, or if I wanted to be really correct, 6.0 times 10 to the second grams of sodium sulfate. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? All right, let's see you do it. But before you try to do it, why don't you write down Sylvester? Write down Sylvester. S-Y-L-V-E-S-T-R. Write down Sylvester. It occurred to me that I may have some newbies listening in to have, who may not have had me before in lecture and may have no clue as to what I'm doing um, up here with this line thing. Let me explain it. All it is is this line is a way of stringing together ratios. What I've really written here is if I clear everything out of the way, whoops, I meant to clear everything out of the way and now I'm just making a mess. Um, what I've really written here is I've written two ratios. I've said 4.2 moles of sodium sulfate times the ratio of one mole sodium sulfate to 142.045 grams sodium sulfate. All this line method that I use is, is a way of stringing together ratios. And this horizontal line represents a division symbol. And where you see those x's, you get a multiplication symbol. So you'd have a multiplication symbol right there and a division symbol right there. And you can see that when we look at the things down here. Right? Multiplication symbol, multiplication symbol, division symbol, division symbol. Just a quick note on my notation. Here's one for you to try on your own. If you're going to get the full benefit of this, you've got to pause me and try to, try to work this yourself before I show you how to work it. Please, I am begging you, take a swing at this before you, you, you look at the answer. Pause me now. Pause me. I said, pause me. Pretty please? All right, all right. Some of you paused me. Others of you can't go a minute without listening to me, and I understand that. Who doesn't want to spend lots of quality time with me? All right, so let's work this example. We're going to start our line with 0 0.567 moles 
of calcium hydroxide, our first step is going to be to get rid of moles of calcium hydroxide. Do I know a relationship between moles of calcium hydroxide and the mass of calcium hydroxide? Sure I do. Absolutely I do. 100% I do. You bet your bottom dollar I know the relationship. They've been going steady for about three weeks. They've only had one... Oh, sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong relationship there. Um, we go to the periodic chart and we can calculate the mass of one mole of calcium hydroxide. One mole of calcium hydroxide contains one mole of calcium, and according to the periodic table, one mole of calcium has a mass of 40.078 grams, and one mole of calcium hydroxide has two moles of oxygen. Where does that two come from? Right, that two is outside the parentheses, so I have not two moles of oxygen and two moles of hydrogen. And each mole of oxygen has a mass of 16.00 grams, and each mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.088 grams. And I got those all from the periodic table. So then I do my math, and I get 40.078 grams, I get 32 grams, and I get 1.008 grams. Whoops, sorry. Can't multiply by 4 today. I can't multiply by 2 today, can I? I get um, 2.016. Add everything together. and I get 74.094 .09, grams of calcium hydroxide in one mole of calcium hydroxide. So now I have my conversion factor between moles and grams, so I come back up here to my problem, and I keep the numbers with their units, one mole of calcium hydroxide is equivalent to 74.094 grams of calcium hydroxide. Multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, and 0 0.567 times 74.094, and I get 42.011 coming off my calculator. However, if we look at our sig figs, we've got one, two, three sig figs here, so one, two, three. So my answer should be 42.0 grams. Chemistry's easy, life is hard, yes? Life is really, really hard if you're Daffy Duck. Write down Daffy Duck, D-A-F-F-Y. Have you ever noticed how Warner Brothers and Disney both made the angry animal ducks? Makes you wonder what happened in California that so many people were scarred and, hangered, and considered ducks such angry um, issues. Oh, wait a second. I bet I know. Look at the record of the Oregon ducks compared to the California colleges at the moment. Hmm. All right. Let's keep going. All right, let's do a couple more quick review um, things for the mole here. And again, this should be review for you. Um, let's take a look at this type of problem. How many moles of calcium hydroxide 
in da How many moles of calcium hydroxide in 3.23 times 10 to the negative fourth grams of calcium hydroxide? Once again, what are we going to do? We're going to start our line with what we've got in the problem, and that's 3.23 times 10 to the negative fourth grams of calcium hydroxide. So we start our line with that. We have grams up here. And remember, whatever unit I have right here from chapter one, I automatically place down here. No thinking, no ifs, ands, or buts. I have to get rid of that unit, otherwise I wouldn't be doing the problem. So I place those down there. Now I need a relationship between grams and moles. Do I have one? Yeah, I calculated one last problem. If you look at your paper from the last problem, you'll see that we calculated the molar mass of calcium hydroxide to be one mole of calcium hydroxide equals 74.094 grams of calcium hydroxide. So there's our relationship between moles and grams. I have grams down here this time, so I need to write the numbers with their units. 74.094 is equivalent to one mole of calcium hydroxide. So I'm going to multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, and I get 3.23 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 74.094 and I get my calculator gives me the calculator lie 4.3593 times 10 to the negative 6 is the lie. I only have three sig figs here, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to come over here, 1, 2, 3. And that gives me an answer of 4.36 times 10 to the negative sixth moles of calcium hydroxide. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? Now let's see you work one of these. All right, here's one for you to do. How many moles of potassium carbonate in 12.3 grams of potassium carbonate? And apparently I am taking lessons from the William Shatner School of Public Speaking because I couldn't have read that any more choppy if I tried, but now I'm sounding like a robot. I hope you've paused me, by right, paused me right now and are working on this on your own. So pause me, try it on yourself, then come back and take a look at what I've got for the answer. All right, hopefully you worked it yourself. How many moles of potassium carbonate in 12.3 grams of potassium carbonate? Start your line with the only number given to you in the problem, 12.3 grams potassium carbonate. I have grams as my starting unit, so I know my first step is going to involve canceling out grams. Do I know a conversion factor between moles and grams? Yes, the periodic table gives me one. I know that one mole of potassium carbonate contains two moles of potassium. According to the periodic table, each mole of potassium has a mass of 39.0983 grams. It has one mole of carbon at 12.011 grams and three moles of oxygen at 15 point, I'm sorry, 16 
0.00 grams. That is 48 grams. That is 12.011 grams. And that is, um, <laughs> my darkest fleas, 2 times 39.0983 is 78.1. Nine six six grams. Add them all together. And that gives us one hundred and thirty eight point two one grams per one mole. So one hundred and thirty eight point to one grams of potassium carbonate per one mole potassium carbonate multiply everything on top divide through by everything on the bottom and that gives me a calculator lie of 0 0.08899 Check my sig figs. I've got one, two, three, four, four sig figs here. So I need four sig figs here. One, two, three, four. Round on the basis of the six. And that makes that a 10, that a 10, and that a nine. So my final answer in correct scientific, in correct, um, not scientific notation, in correct sig figs. If I wanted to put it in scientific notation, which actually is a very good idea, <laughs> chemistry is easy, life is hard, yes? All right, now we've finished the review. Let's move on to the new part, where we're going to roll this concept of going from grams to moles with information given to us by a chemical reaction. And we're going to be able to do something that's going to be a daily task for a lot of you in the workplace. Or if you go into the laboratory environment, this is going to be a task you're going to be doing over and over again. So let's find a chemical reaction to talk about. Anybody know a good one? All right, so let's take a look at this reaction. This is the reaction of iron with oxygen to yield iron 3 oxide. This reaction can be read in terms of moles. We can say 4 moles of iron reacts with 3 moles of oxygen to yield 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. This chemical reaction, believe it or not, is one big unit conversion. This chemical reaction re relates every chemical species in it to every other chemical species. According to this chemical equation, 4 moles of iron is equivalent to 3 moles of oxygen. According to this chemical equation, 4 moles of iron is equivalent to 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. According to this chemical equation, 3 moles of oxygen is equivalent to 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. A chemical reaction provides a pathway to convert moles of any substance in it to moles of any other substance in it. This is a very powerful tool. It lets us answer some very important and very easy questions. For example,
how many moles of oxygen would I need to react completely with 12 moles, whoops, what did I do there, with 12 moles of iron? How many moles of oxygen would I need to react completely with 12 moles of iron? Well, we treat this just like any other unit conversion. We start our line with a number given to us in the problem, 12 moles of iron. So I have 12 moles of iron. I don't want moles of iron, so I'm going to place moles of iron down here where they'll cancel out. Whenever you switch substances, you have to use a chemical reaction. I'm wanting to go from moles of oxygen, I'm wanting to go from moles of iron to moles of oxygen. Therefore, I have to use a chemical reaction. If I look at my chemical reaction, my chemical reaction tells me four moles of iron is equivalent to three moles of oxygen. 4 moles of iron is equivalent to 3 moles of oxygen. So my unit conversion would be 4 moles of iron equals 3 moles of oxygen. So I keep my numbers with their units. 4 moles of iron is equivalent to 3 moles of oxygen. So I multiply everything on top and I divide through by everything on the bottom. And that actually winds up giving me 9 moles of oxygen. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? There's nothing that says I have to stick between reactants. For example, I could do this by saying, clean things up a little bit here, I could ask myself, um, how many moles of iron 3 oxide could I produce with 24 moles of iron and excess oxygen. All right, first of all, you have just heard the most beautiful word in all of chemistry and not realized it. How many moles of iron 3 oxide could I produce with 24 moles of iron and excess oxygen. Who doesn't like things that go to excess? No one. The reason excess is the most wonderful word in all of chemistry is it means you get to ignore whatever comes after it. So we have oxygen. That means we just get to forget about it. We don't have to worry about the oxygen. We just have to focus on the other species. So I read this question and I've been given one number, 24 moles of iron. So I'm going to use that to start my line with. 24 moles of iron. According to this chemical reaction, my relationship between moles of iron and my moles of iron 3 oxide is 4 moles of iron can produce 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. So it's a 4 to 2 ratio. So my conversion factor is right there. 4 moles, place units where they cancel out. I have moles of iron right here, so I'm going to place moles of iron down there. Keep their numbers with their units, and I'm going to produce 2 moles of iron 3 oxide for every 4 moles of iron I have. So I multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, and I wind up producing 12 moles of iron 3 oxide. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? Let's keep going. Let's see you work one real quickly, just to make sure you're with me. And let's do some cleanup. Clean up on aisle two. Do, 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 do. And everything disappears. Okay. Try this question.
If you want to make 4.8 moles of iron 3 oxide, how many moles of oxygen would you need? All right, pause me and try it yourself real quickly. All right, I hope you paused me. So we're starting looking at our problem. We've got 4.8 moles of iron 3 oxide. So we know we're going to start our line by writing 4.8 moles of iron 3 oxide. That's going to go in our start position. We don't know what we're doing next, but we know that the units that are right here automatically go down there. I know, they gave me a lightsaber to play with. How good is life? All right. I'm wanting to go from moles of iron 3 oxide to moles of oxygen. According to my chemical re equation, what's the relationship? For every two moles of iron I want to produce, I need three moles of oxygen. So my relationship would be three moles of oxygen to two moles of iron 3 oxide. So keep their numbers in front of their moles, three moles oxygen. Multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, and that gives you 72? No, 64, I bet. Um, will you still love me when I'm... Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, 7.2. I can be taught. Ha ha. So that gives you 7.2 moles of oxygen that you would need to make 4.8 moles of iron 3 oxide. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? All right, same reaction, but this time we're moving it into the laboratory setting. Instead of going from moles to moles, we're going to bring it close to the laboratory by starting with grams. How many moles of iron 3 oxide can you produce with 4.20 grams of iron and excess oxygen? All right, we're going to treat these problems, and I guess apparently I'm on a roll to see how many times I can say all right in a single solitary lecture. Anybody at home keeping count? But at any rate, we're going to treat these just like we did the problems from chapter one. We're going to look for our problem, and whatever number they give us in this problem, that's what we're going to start with. They gave us 4.20 grams of iron, so we're going to start our line with 4.20 grams of iron. I have no clue how to solve this problem. However, I know my first step is going to be getting rid of grams of iron. What's the only thing I know about grams in chemistry? The only thing I ever know about grams in chemistry is the molar mass. If I look at my periodic chart, I see that one mole of iron has a mass of, where did it go, of 55.845 grams. So I have a relationship between grams and moles. Will that get me anywhere? No clue, but it's better than nothing. Maybe the professor will give me some partial credit there. So, 55.845 grams of iron is equivalent to one mole of iron. So I've gone from grams of iron over here to moles of iron over here, and I've used my molar mass as a conversion factor. All right, so now I'm done with my grams, but I have moles of iron, and that's not what the problem's asking for. The problem wants to know how many moles of iron 3 oxide I can produce. So I know my next step is going to involve getting rid of moles of iron. Do I know a relationship between moles of iron and moles of iron 3 oxide? Yes, I do! My chemical reaction gives it to me. My chemical reaction says that four moles of iron is equivalent to two moles of iron 3 oxide. 
So 4 moles of iron equals 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. And I got that simply by looking at my chemical equation. So now I've canceled out my moles of iron, and I went from moles of iron to moles of iron 3 oxide using my stoichiometric relationship from a chemical reaction. And somebody in my own, uh, my face-to-face -face asked about this. Rxn is chemical shorthand for reaction. Rxn is chemical shorthand for reaction. Whenever you switch substances, you have to use the coefficients from a chemical reaction. Whenever you switch species, you must use reactions. All right, so multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, and that gives us, calculators please, I've got 4.2 divided by 55.845, divide by 4 times 2, and that gives me the calculator lie of 0 0.0376048. That's my calculator lie. Check my sig figs. I've got one, two, three sig figs here. By the way, these are exact numbers. When we're talking sig figs, this molar relationship here is considered exact because we're counting atoms is the idea. So that molar relationship right there is exact. So our sig figs are merely going to be determined by our starting mass. So I've got one, two, three sig figs. One, two, three sig figs. One, two, three. Round on the basis of the zero. And that gives me a, finer, a final answer, Alec, of 0 0.0376 moles of iron, Three oxide is how much I can produce. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? Are you ready? I know you're ready. Let's kick this party up a notch. All right, let's go full bore, full on, all the way, grams to grams. How many grams of oxygen would you need to react with 72 grams of iron? All right, deep breath. You have no idea how to work the problem. Not a big deal. Neither do I. What I do know is that if I simply follow the units, I'll be okay. I have 72 grams of iron to start off with. I know I don't want grams of iron, so I know my next step is going to involve getting rid of grams of iron. What do I know about grams of iron? The only thing I ever know about grams is the molar mass. I know according to the periodic table that one mole of iron is equal to 55.845 grams of iron. So 55.845 grams of iron is equivalent to one mole of iron. So I've gone from grams of iron to moles of iron using my molar mass as a conversion factor. Grams of iron have canceled out. I don't want moles of iron though. That's not what the problem is asking for. So I know my next step is going to be to get rid of those same moles of iron that I worked so hard to get to. What do I know about moles of iron? Well, I know their relationship to moles of oxygen. How do I know the relationship between moles of iron and moles of oxygen? The chemical equation tells me. It tells me I need four moles of iron to react with three moles of oxygen. Four moles of iron, three moles of oxygen. That's what my chemical equation is telling me. Four moles of iron, equals three moles oxygen. So I place the numbers next to their units, four moles iron, three moles of oxygen. 
Do I want moles of oxygen? No, that's not what I'm being asked about. I'm being asked about grams of oxygen. So I know I'm going to have to get rid of my, my moles of oxygen. So just to catch up, I've gone from moles of iron now to moles of oxygen, and I've used this coefficients for my chemical reaction to do so. And now I want to go from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. How can I get the grams of oxygen? Using the periodic chart as conversion factor. I always know molar mass thanks to the periodic table. One mole of molecular oxygen contains two moles of oxygen atoms. According to the periodic table, each mole of oxygen atoms has a mass of 16 grams. So one mole of molecular oxygen contains a mass of 32 grams. So one mole of molecular oxygen has a mass of 32 grams. This is the most common mistake I see on an exam, by the way, is oxygen can be tricky. Oxygen in its diatomic form, one mole of it contains two moles of oxygen atoms. So you have to remember to double that 16. So I've used the molar mass to go from moles of oxygen to mass of oxygen. And I've just been placing my, my units where they cancel out. Right, grams to grams, moles to moles, moles to moles. And now I'm in grams. So hey, I have grams of oxygen. That's the unit I'm being asked for in my question, so I must be done. So now I'm going to multiply everything on top and divide by everything on the bottom. And when I do that, I get 72 divided by 55.845 divided by 4 times 3 times 32, and I get a calculator lie of 30.942788 is the lie. If I look at my sig figs, one, two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, round on the basis of the four. And I get a final answer of 30.9 grams of oxygen is how much oxygen I'd need to react with 72 grams of iron. Ta-da! Let's take a look at another. I just noticed something here. Um, I hope it didn't throw people. I made a little bit of a mistake here. Right? That should be iron. Um, two, three. There we go. I apologize. Hope that didn't cause anybody any major issues there. Okay, here's a problem I want you to try on your own. How many grams of iron 3 oxide can you make with 42 grams of oxygen and excess iron? And by on your own, I mean you're going to pause me, work the problem, then come back and check. And I'm really begging you to. I mean, you can't see me, but I have holes in my jeans because I'm on the ground begging you as hard as possible. Please, please pause me and work this on your own. All right. I'm hoping you've paused me. And I said all right again in the lecture. What is that, number 50? But at any rate, and how many but any rates if I put in here? Wow, I'm a catchphrase king. We look at our problem. And we see one number to start with, 42 grams. So I have 42 grams of oxygen. I don't want grams of oxygen. So I know my next step is going to be to place grams of oxygen where they'll cancel out. The only thing I ever, ever know about grams of oxygen is the molar mass. I mean, the only thing I ever know about grams is molar mass. One mole of oxygen contains two moles of oxygen atoms. According to my periodic chart, each one has a mass of 16 grams. So 32 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen. So 32 grams equals one mole of oxygen. So I've placed grams where they cancel out. I now have moles.
I don't want moles of oxygen, however. So in my next step, I'm going to place my moles of oxygen where they'll cancel out. Do I know a relationship between moles of oxygen and grams of iron 3 oxide? Well, I don't know a relationship between moles of oxygen and grams, but I know a relationship between moles of oxygen and moles of iron 3 oxide. I know that 3 moles of oxygen equals 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. So 3 moles of oxygen equals 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. So now I've gone to moles of iron 3 oxide. Do I want moles of iron 3 oxide though? No. I want grams. So I'm going to place those units where they'll cancel out as well. Following that same diagonal pattern, right? Whatever unit's here goes here. Whatever unit's here goes here. Whatever unit's here goes here. Do I know a relationship between grams of iron 3 oxide and moles of iron 3 oxide? Sure I do. Of course I do. I always know the molar mass of a substance. I know that one mole of iron 3 oxide contains two moles of iron, and according to my periodic table, each one of those moles of iron has a mass of 55.845 grams, and three moles of oxygen at 16.00 grams each. That gives me 111 plus 32, basically. 55.895 times 2 plus 3 times 16 is 159.79 grams. So, one mole is 159.79 grams. All right, so now I multiply everything on top. I divide by everything on the bottom, and I get... One hundred and thirty nine point eight. One hundred and thirty nine point eight grams of iron three oxide. Chemistry is easy, life is hard, yes? What we saw and what we worked here is a pattern you'll use over and over and over and over again in chemistry. The last two problems shared a similar setup. Those setup and that setup went grams of A to moles of A. Then I got rid of moles of A, and I switched to moles of B. And then I got rid of moles of B. Whoops. Then I got rid of moles of B and went to grams of B. My pattern was grams of A to moles of A using molar mass as a conversion factor. Then I went to moles of B using my reaction coefficients, and then I went to grams of B using the molar mass again. Couple important things about this pattern that will help you from making mistakes. Whenever you're doing molar mass, you're always doing it relative to one mole. 
that means that there should always be a 1 right there. And when you're going the other direction, using molar mass again, there should always be 1, because you're always relating 1 mole of whatever is here to a given number of grams. 1 mole of whatever is here to a given number of grams. Remember, whatever is above and below a line has to equal each other. Remember, above has to equal what's immediately below it. The only place where you can have a number of moles other than one is right here. That's the only place you can have other, something other than one. A lot of the time, those numbers will be one. But that's the only place in this line where you can have a number other than one for a number of moles. is when you're switching substances. All right, let's take a look at another reaction altogether. But I haven't had you write down anything in ages. You've probably been busy tweeting that I'm falling down on the job. So why don't you write down Tweety? Everybody write down Tweety Bird. T-W-E-E-T-Y. Ooh, I just realized, how is Warner Brothers not suing the heck out of Twitters for Tweety? Really, I would. There's got to be lawyers working on that. I may Google that. I may Google if Twitter's being sued by Warner Brothers. Ooh, how many media country, country companies am I war running across on that one? But everybody's writing down Tweety. All right, a new chemical reaction. Finally, some of you are saying. This chemical reaction has more substance in it than, it than the other one did. So let's take a second just to write our relationships here. The fact that we have more species doesn't matter. If two compounds or two substances or two species are in a chemical equation, they're related to each other. Just like it doesn't matter what color your cousin's hair is, sorry Game of Thrones, if they're in your family, they're related to each other. So according to this chemical equation, two moles of lead to sulfur is equal to three moles of oxygen, and two moles of lead to sulfur is equivalent to two moles of lead to oxide and two moles of lead to sulfur is equivalent to two moles of sulfur dioxide. But wait, there's more. This is like the amazing Ginsa. Three moles of oxygen is related to two moles of lead to oxide and three moles of oxygen is equivalent to two moles of sulfur dioxide. And there's still yet more according to this chemical equation. Two moles of lead to oxide is equivalent to two moles of sulfur dioxide. If they're in a chemical equation, they're related to each other by those chemical coefficients. Isn't life wonderful? All right, now let's get to the part where you've all been dying for. Let's get to something where we can work a problem. So let's see. How many grams of lead to oxide can you produce from 72 grams of oxygen and excess lead to sulfide? All right, you're panicking. It's a test. You have no idea how to work it. Deep breath. Just take it one step at a time. First, they've only given us one number, so we know that's where we're going to start our line. 72 grams of oxygen. I don't want grams of oxygen, so I'm going to place grams of oxygen where they cancel out. The only thing I ever know about grams is molar mass. If I go to my periodic table, 
I see that one mole of oxygen contains two moles of oxygen atoms at 16 grams each for 32 grams. So one mole of oxygen contains 32 grams of oxygen. Ooh, I should have told you to pause me. Pause me. Try this on your own. Try this on your own. Okay, did you pause me and try it on your own? Hope so. All right, now I continue. 72 grams of oxygen, one mole, 32. I've gotten rid of grams of oxygen, and I now have moles of oxygen. I don't want moles of oxygen, so I know my next step is going to involve getting rid of moles of oxygen. The only way I can switch substances is to use a chemical equation to convert moles of one substance to moles of another substance. According to my chemical reaction, three moles of oxygen, because I have a three right here, is equivalent to two moles of lead two oxide. I have a three in front of my oxygen, so I write a three in front of my oxygen down there. I have a two in front of my lead two oxide, so I write a two down there, because those two are equal to each other. I've now crossed out my moles of oxygen, and I have moles of lead oxide. That's not what I'm being asked for in the question, though. I'm being asked for grams of lead to oxide, so I have one more step I have to do. I have to get rid of moles of lead oxide and go to grams of lead oxide. The periodic chart always tells me the relationship between moles and grams. One mole of lead oxide contains one mole of lead. According to my periodic chart, one mole of lead is 207.2 grams. Double checking here. Yep. And then one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. So 0.2322. So 223 grams there, 223.2 grams of lead oxide and one mole of lead two oxide, because that's my molar mass. So I've canceled out my uh, moles of lead two oxide. I have units of grams of lead two oxide, so I must be done. Now all I need to do is multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go 72 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3 times 223.2, and that gives me, my calculator tells me 334.8 grams of lead oxide sig fig check. One, two, three sig figs here, so one, two, three sig figs, round on the basis of that eight, and I get a final answer. Yes, Alex, that's my final answer. 335 grams of lead two oxide. Ta-da! Why don't you write down um, Bugs Bunny? Write down Bugs Bunny. B-U-G-S-B-U-N-N-Y. Bugs Bunny. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm bored with oxygen. You know, that just sounds wrong. But I, 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 we've, we've looked at nothing but reactions that have oxygen. So here's one without oxygen, just for us to try something different. And let's answer the question. How many grams of nitrogen would you need to produce 42 grams of ammonia? Pause me and try this yourself. Seriously, pause me and try this yourself. I paused me. I hope you did. 
All right. So we've got one thing to start our line with. We're going from a mass of ammonia to a mass of nitrogen. So we're going from mass to mass. That means we can take comfort because we know we're going to follow that pattern we talked about earlier. We know that we're going to follow that grams of A, moles of A, moles of B to grams of B pattern. So we've got grams of A right here. We don't want grams of A, so we're going to place them where they cancel out. The only thing we ever know about grams is molar mass. We always know the mass of one mole of a substance because that's what the periodic table gives us. One mole of ammonia, according to the periodic table, contains one mole of nitrogen at a mass of 14.007 grams and three moles of hydrogen at 1.008 grams for a total of 17 something here. 14.0078 plus 3 times 1.008 gives me 17.032 um, grams. So one mole of ammonia is 17.032 grams of ammonia. That's a 3. So now I've gotten rid of my grams of ammonia and I've gone from grams of A to moles of A. Now I don't want moles of A, so I know I'm going to have to switch substances. I'm going to have to switch substances using a chemical equation. I have units of moles here, so I'm going to place units down here so they cancel out. So I've placed my units of moles where they cancel out. I look at my chemical equation and I see that for every two moles of ammonia I have, I need one mole of nitri nitrogen. See, it's a one here that's understood, so it's a one to two ratio. So two moles of ammonia require one mole of nitrogen. So those have canceled out. I don't want moles of nitrogen, however. I want grams of nitrogen. So I place my moles of nitrogen where they're going to cancel out. Had moles of nitrogen here, so I place them down here automatically. I always know the relationship between grams and moles. I know that one mole of nitrogen, nitrogen's a diatomic molecule, right? See the little two there? See the little two there? So one mole of nitrogen contains two moles of nitrogen atoms at 14.078 grams each. So that gives me um, 2 times 14, 2 times 14.0078. That gives me 28.0156, 28.0156, multiply everything on top, divide through by everything on the bottom, 42 divided by 17.032 divided by 2 times 28 gives you, ooh, it gives you a calculator lie, gives me a calculator lie of 34.54248, but if I look at my problem, I've got 1, 2, 3 sig figs, so 1, 2, 3, and that gives me a final answer of 34.5 grams of nitrogen. Chemistry is easy, life is hard. 
Um, if you have any questions on these ask, you're more than ready to do them on your own now. But by all means, if you have issues on these, ask me. I'm here for you. I'm willing to help you. I'm wanting to help you. Let's roll.